Yum, yum. Okay, this is just a quick tutorial on folding up a box using order of operations, uh, deformers instead of joints and with no parenting. So, so here's our box, right? Here's the top flap and these are the four sides. That's the bottom flap. And we're gonna fold these two over just to show you how it's done without having to do the whole thing. So first thing I'm gonna do is just add a couple more um, cuts in here. I'm just using the edge loop tool here. You can you know do this however you want to. And I'm not even making sure they're even, I'm just throwing them in there, but that'll be fine for our example. So because we're doing order of operations, we wanna start with the outside flap first. So the outside flap's gonna fold first, and then the bigger, the inside flap, which this is stuck to, is gonna fold second. So let's grab the vertices on the outside flap, and then just, what if I just come over here to um, transform, it'll add a locator, and it'll create the influence, and it'll add a weight map all in one step. So click that, you can see there's the weight map, you can see there's the locator there, and you can see over here there's the, the weight map there. And so I'm just gonna actually go into setup mode here, and I'm gonna move the locator into its starting position. I make sure you do that in setup mode. In fact, you can do all of this in setup mode. Let me just turn off that. Let's go to wireframe here. Oh, this is fine. Um, so I'm gonna just snap it to the middle of this um, edge right there like that and that's where it's going to rotate from right so if i come out of setup mode and i rotate this you can see that it's I'll turn off snapping and i rotate this you can see it's rotating that flap right and i'm gonna change these weights a little bit i'm gonna this weight right here these two verts i'm gonna just turn that to zero i don't need that to to rotate here right that's just um, the edge so we want it to stay the same and then this middle one i'm going to turn it to 50 percent so it just gives me a bit of a turn. Like normally I would put like two more edges here. In fact, why don't I just do that? I'll just do one here and one here. And it, it just interpolates and, and puts those, um, makes the weights for me. So if I if I show like, um, show weight values, like remember that's zero. If you can see that's one, that's 50. And I added this one. So it just kind of split the difference like 25 approximately, 75. And there's, there's those um, guys here. So there's extra lines here, right? Or extra edges. So when I rotate this, right? And I just kind of go up and just hold control. You can snap it to 90 or 15 degree in increments. Now look on the side here, it, it bows out a little bit, right? Now you can change the weights and change the way that bows. Like I can, um, you know, increase these weights past, you know, to more 85 or whatever you can sort of interactively adjust this to get the shape you want. This is what Rich Hurry talks about when you're just creating shapes, right? So, you know, whatever, something like that. So now let's do the next one. So I'm gonna name this because we're gonna just call this um, in flap transform, and then we'll call this transform effector here um, in flap cloak, right? Actually, that's the top flap, call it top flap. And top flap bloke, I really recommend naming everything in your scenes. Okay, now we're gonna um, put this guy back to zero. And I'm actually gonna go back into setup mode. I'm just gonna grab, now I'm gonna grab all these points, right? And I'm gonna create a, another transform. Boom, right, there we go. And then I'm gonna take this guy and call this um, left flap bloke and left flap transform and then again I'm going to just um, I'm just gonna turn on snapping and then just snap this to that edge center right there turn off snapping there we go and then I'm gonna adjust my weights right these two I want zero because that's just the bottom of the box we want it to stay there the middle one we can do um, 50 and then I can do the same thing I just um, add insert a loop here, hold shift, insert another one. It'll just kind of smooth it out there. So now if you look at this, like, again, we're going from the um, bottom up, right? That's the evaluation, that's the order of operations. So we're not parenting these or anything like that. So we're just, you know, when you animate it, this is gonna go first. So I'll just put a, a keyframe here, then I'll go to like 30 and turn that up to, um, you know, negative 90 like that. And then this guy, 
uh, the second one here, left flap, we can just maybe start what is halfway up or maybe two thirds of the way up. And I'm just gonna put a keyframe and then at um, 50, we will hold control and make that negative 90. So now when, when they animate, it's boom, boom. Now there's no, um, you'll notice this locator doesn't go with it. And we don't need to do this parenting you know, we don't need a hierarchy because, you know, basically Moto is ignoring this second transform until this one's done. And so once this one's done, even, you know, even though in time wise, it's not done animating yet before this one starts, in terms of evaluation, it evaluates this entire transform first, and then it evaluates this one. And since this is already bent, it just goes with it, right? And so, you know, if I were to switch these around like this, it, it's going to get messed up because it's it's going to, you see how that happens? It's animating, it's evaluating this bottom one first. So it's evaluating this bottom one. And then it's like, okay, what's, you know, once that's done, I'll evaluate the top one. But the locator is down here at this point. It's away from this and it's still trying to rotate from down here. So you see that happening. So. You know, we're just using order of operations instead of doing some sort of complex parenting hierarchy. That's it. Okay, let's add a bend to this as well now. So I'm just going to um, just add some flaps here. I mean, I really wish we could use 17 if it wasn't so buggy, but we're stuck with 16. So, all right. So I'm just, you know, whatever. We just want a nice enough edges for a nice smooth bend. And then I'm just going to add a, a bend operator like that. And then I need to position this. Um, let's go to setup mode. It's good practice to position these in setup mode. And so I'm just going to um, actually, we'll just put it on the uh, X axis and then um, let's get rotated around and then channel haul it down to the edge here. Actually, let me move it into position. So I'll just turn on snapping again and snap it to this bottom edge and then channel haul that length down and then uh, yeah, turn off snapping and then get out of um, order of operation or get out of set of mode. So here's our bend, right? I can channel haul that. Now order of operations is going to be important here because again, if we do this and then I try to bend it, you know, the bend handles really way far away from that. So instead of trying to parent the bend handle to this and you know do this work trying to keep the bend handle in position the whole time, I'm just using order of operations. I'm just going to do the bend first. So this starts you know animating right away. Let's actually um, select all the animated channels by Shift Z and move everything up like a little bit here. So let's let's start the bend a little bit early, right? So I'm going to go to my bend handle, and I always like to put the camera in way to the top. <laughs> So I got my bend handle here and I'm going to, um, you know, start the angle here and then maybe like here, I'm going to be sort of at um, peak bend. And then by the time I get up here, let's just bend, let's just go back to zero like this. So you now here's what's happening. It's, it's going to bend first and then rotate and then the bottom flap is going to rotate. So it's going to bend, kind of come up. So maybe... Let's just change that. Uh, this one happened a little earlier, right? So it's sort of bending and rotating at the same time, bending a little bit before and then starts rotating, right? And then it comes up. Okay. And so that's that's how you would do it. You just, you know, you could just rotate these up and put bends on these as well if you, if you want to. Um, and then I, I would usually just grab the whole thing and do a transform at the end. And this one is just because I have the item selected, it just does entire mesh and you want that last. So a lot of times you think like, you know, um, you want to move something into place first and then deform it. Here you want all of these deformations to happen first. Then I could take this entire mesh locator and just sort of move this wherever I want and it's going to animate correctly. I can rotate it, scale it, whatever, and it's still going to work. Now, if I had tried to do that with started moving the mesh around, right, I'm moving the mesh 
and say I wanted it over here and I wanted it like this, you know, and big, it's not going to work because the mesh is, you know, out of position and all the deformers are down here. So you want to put the mesh into position with, you know, a, a locator um, that operate that is evaluated uh, last, even if you just want to do something like rotate it, right? Okay. Mm -hmm.